Flipgrid is a wonderful web tool, and as their tagline says, that empowers every single voice in your classroom. Hi, my name is Amanda Voltz. I'm a personal finance teacher at St. Clair High School in St. Clair, Michigan, and I'm going to give you some tech tips on some web tools that you might use in your classroom, whether you're teaching online, you're teaching remotely, or you're just lo looking to bring some more tech tools or web tools into your classroom. I'm going to create some short little videos. Um, this is one of them about Flipgrid and how you you can incorporate Flipgrid in the NGPF curriculum into your class. So Flipgrid, like I said, is a way for students to do short recordings of themselves, and I've used it in small groups or even just one-on-one -on -one with the student, and they can create a short video. You can set times. I'll show you how to set all of that up, and then you can allow it where just I can see it as a teacher, more of like a reflective type Flipgrid, or you can use it as somewhat of a discussion amongst your class where all the other students in your class can you can see each other's um, Flipgrids or videos. So if you have never used Flipgrid before, you're gonna wanna sign up for an account right here with this blue button. I already have an account. I've used Flipgrid for a couple years now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. And then I use my Google login because I'm a Google Classroom user and um, we have Google Apps for Education in our district. I log in with everything with my Google account because Flipgrid is a great web tool that syncs really well with Google Classroom. So if you're a Google Classroom user also, there's like a one button, assign that Flipgrid right to your um, Google Classroom, which is awesome and it works well. When you first sign up for Flipgrid, yours is gonna be blank on this. By the way, I'm on the My Grids tab right at the top and I think by default it will take you there. So you do have like a My um, Activity button, you have some library, options here you have all different options at the top but mostly I stick to the my grids as I'm creating this for my students and again yours will be blank but I have multiple um, grids that that's what they call them in Flipgrid but multiple grids here um, from my first semester classes and my second semester classes Heads up, I teach um, the same class all day long. So I have five sections of the same course, but I create a grid for every hour, as you can kind of see that. So I teach financial management. I teach mostly 12th graders. I do have access to Chromebooks on a daily basis. In Flipgrid, it is a web tool, so you will need access to something that has a camera where the student can film themselves. They, a lot of them like doing it on their phones also, if you allow that in your classroom, but you, depending on kind of your setup as far as computer lab, laptops, you know, Chromebooks, whatever, the whole point is that they're, they're recording themselves, so they'll need access to the mic and the video option on their laptop. Um, when I first started with Flipgrid, as you can see down here, I just created like a test class to kind of play around. And if you have time for that, I would encourage you to do the same where nobody's in it, nobody can see it. You can log in yourself maybe as a student and kind of play with it, but it's just a way to kind of play around with the web tool. I do that a lot with web tools as I'm learning them. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to create a new grid. So um, you'll name your grid. I'm just going to call it um, Personal Finance NGPF, just for this, this um, example. And then the you can select the type of grid that you want um, as far as the settings in the grid. So you can have students join with their Google account. That's what I use because I do have... Um, a Google for Education in my district. So I have a Google account, my students do, which allows us to use Google Classroom and all of those things. So I, I use that frequently, meaning the student has to log into it. It's just not accessible to anyone online. You can have a list of student IDs where students have to put in a specific ID to get into the Flipgrid, or you can make it public if you want to. So most often I'm choosing that one, which requires them to log into their account to get in. And then you can um, create and custom your own Flipgrid um, code for them to get in down here at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. This is where I can um, add a school email, meaning I teach in East China School District. So you see by default, because I've used this before, but yours may not, yours is going to come up blank, meaning that my in order to get into the Flipgrid, because students are recording themselves and you don't want anyone to be able to access that information, they have to be logging in with their school Google account um, and mine ends in the at ecsd.us, all of their email addresses do. So I put that in here um, as far as the domain that is linked to this account. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. 
And it says my grid is ready. It's already there and ready to be used. And I can share this code right here with my students. So that's one way they can get into it um, is by giving them this code, whether you post it on a board, um, on a website, and like I said, Google Classroom, there you go. You can share right to Google Classroom. It looks like there's multiple options here that you oh, share right on Remind. Also, you could share it if you use Remind in your classroom. I most often do it with Google Classroom, but um, sometimes I wait and kind of build it out first and then share. So then I'm going to go ahead and click Go to My Grid. And here is my grid for my assignment. So I um, have the flip code right here, like kind of what I named it. I can add what's called a co-pilot, like a co-teacher, a co, uh, I don't wanna say observer, but someone who's also in charge of this project. I can add that right here. And really what your grid is, is it's your class. You'll assign topics within the grid, if that makes sense. So the, this whole thing that I just made is like my first hour or my second hour or this course or this class. And now I'm gonna add things within this particular topic. Now up here at the very top, you see there's actions. You can do multiple different things here if you need to, like I just wanna delete that, I made a mistake, or I can, like I said, add co-pilots. You can duplicate it if you want to and then go in and rename. I think it's easier just to make a new grid for every class that you have. But they do have what, they call it actions, but it's really the settings of your particular class or your grid. So now here they say like, or they have like a demo kind of one already built in as um, you start creating your own grids. But now you're gonna add a topic. So the topic is what you want the students to reply to. So here you add the title. Okay, so how can we loop NGPF kind of into this web tool? Uh, NGPF has lots of different activities, I think, that could lend themselves to students creating a Flipgrid. And again, think of it like a way for them to talk to you or talk to their students or their peers in the classroom to either be teaching information, discussion of some different topics, um, reteaching information, demonstrating knowledge, any of those ways that you could do it. One of the things that NGPF offers that I think would lend itself well to Flipgrid is they do offer debate activities. And um, almost every unit has something, or a few of their units have different debate activities. So for example, one of them in one of the units in the types of credit unit is um, a debate on whether college students should have credit cards. So um, I think I did a teacher tip video on this that also references Flipgrid, but um, here you uh, debate right here, should college students have credit cards? So students do some research on it, they kind of form their opinion, do some research on the topic, and then one way for them to debate essentially or share their research is to do a Flipgrid. You could do it that way. Um, another activity is under the investing. I think there's another debate in the investing unit. So when I go to um, their investing unit, they have um, another uh, debate, but I don't believe it's called a debate. It's called a project. Should municipal bonds fund stadiums? So they do, again, research on the topic, learning about municipal bonds, forming their opinion, and then they could create a flip grid with what ultimately their response is with some research to back it up. Another activity that you could use, I think, with Flipgrid, and then I'll stop there with three, is in um, the managing credit with credit scores on how can I improve my credit score. So there's a project here also, um, right here at the bottom, where they research different ways that they could improve their credit score. And maybe they do the research and then they create a Flipgrid video saying, here's some strategies for you to build your credit score. So let's use this one as the example in our Flipgrid. So how can I improve my credit score? So I'm gonna make that my topic. How can I um, improve my credit score? Um, you give them a limit on the how long their recording can be. So it goes up to five minutes. So that's something important to know that the smallest duration of time is 15 seconds. And whatever limit you set it at, it's gonna cut them off. They're not gonna be able to go beyond that. So if you're really strict about the time, you can set it. Like in three minutes or less, I want you to tell me this, or the max you can do is five. I'm just gonna set it for five minutes. Here is where you can put all of the details of that particular Flipgrid. So you can pull some of the information from maybe um, the assignment that they have here, 
or you can give them some direct instruction on what you want them to do. So here's the activity from NGPF, and ultimately they're gonna look up some strategies to improve their credit score, and then at the very end, I would have, add a blurb along with the way to get there to this Flipgrid on how they would do that. So this is like the details that you can add in here. Scrolling down, you can also add media to this, a lot of different media, as far as different like um, a Nearpod or a news article, or you can upload like your own video giving an explanation of what you want them to do. I first introduced Flipgrid in my classroom by just doing some basic introductions on the first day of class. So I do that as a way to get to know them, for them to get to know each other, and then also for them to get to know Flipgrid. So at the beginning of the school year, I do Flipgrid on like day one, day two, and I upload a video, I just click this record a video button, and I record a video of myself introducing to them, and then they do that same in return, introduce themselves to me. So there's another easy way that you could use Flipgrid at the beginning of the school year. So you can use any of this media. So now here I'm gonna go ahead and click, click create topic, um, please, oh, I have to put something in here. So I'm just gonna, just for the sheer sake of this video, I'm just gonna rewrite my um, question as the title. You would be more detailed than that when you're actually creating it yourself. So now here I'm gonna go ahead and create my topic. Um, there we go. Your topic is ready. And again, I get that same share where I can share the link with students or I can share, um, share it directly to Google Classroom. I can do the same way. So when I go back to my board here, this is where I can now see this exact um, Flipgrid right here. And one thing that to pay attention to when you're assigning this to students is here's where you can make things active or inactive. Meaning when I click on this link right here, I can make it active, meaning the, the link is live. Students can get in, they can submit their videos, you can make it frozen, like it's halted, or you can hide. Frozen means you can't add any more to it, but students can still see the videos that were created. And then you can also make it hidden, meaning it's gone now. Students can't see it anymore. So those are options for you there. You can also go back if you need that share link or information, you can click right there on that blue button, and that'll also give you a share option. And then actions, again, is kind of like the settings where you can duplicate this topic, you can delete it, you can do, that's like the settings of your particular grid right here. So um, what else do I need to show you here with Flipgrid? So I'm gonna show you actually, I think it's easier to look at what mine looks like in some that I've done with students before. So if I go back to Flipgrid and I go to one of my hours, so I'm gonna go just to my first hour here, when I click on my grid, you see that I have what, they did something called a company competition. They did a building credit 101, like giving advice um, as far as building out credit, kind of similar to the how do I improve my credit score. And then that was one of my first ones, my introduce yourself. And do you notice I have them all hidden right now? So if my students were to log in to their account, then they wouldn't be able to see these right now. I've hidden them because they were from a while ago. But if I go ahead and just click on this introduce yourself, see how I recorded a video of myself. This was the introduction one. Welcome to Flipgrid. I gave them some direction kind of here at the top. And then there's all my students. So you can see all my students' videos are right here from the first day of school, which is actually kind of fun to go back and look at from that first day of school of introducing themselves. And see how some of them I let them partner up and then some of them did it on their own. And all of these are hidden right now. So if this was a live feed, meaning like it was open and active, they wouldn't be able to see each other's because I made their videos hidden. One thing that you can do is I could go in here and I can make it active and active means that the students can all see each other's. So it depends on how you want to use this video in your classroom. If you wanna use it as a discussion where they watch each other's videos, then you could leave it active, not hidden. Active means that they can see each other's. They can actually comment on them. You can set all of those settings up if you wanna allow all of that. I have them all hidden, as you can see. So if I go up here to um, the um, actions of this and I edit this topic. I just want to show you what it looks like from like the facilitator or the, the standpoint. Here's where I added my video. And then you can see that you can also add attachments to it. Um, you can also moderate it. See how I have that turned on, which means that the student sends their video and then I can um, approve it before all of the students see it. 
because the students are creating the videos. So you want to make sure that they're appropriate so you can add that moderation. You can allow students to reply to one another. And then you can add dates, a date range where you want it to freeze. And this is all when you set up your Flipgrid. And I just went to those settings. There are lots of other video features and settings that you can turn on and off, such as edit, allowing students to edit the videos that they create, having view counts, allowing students to like each other's video if they are, um, you're allowing them to view each other's. So once you click update topic, it updates everything. And again, all of those um, settings were here under actions and then edit topic. So Flipgrid's a great web tool to use in the classroom to allow students to give their own voice, to allow them to reply to prompts that you give them, to uh, do some formative assessments within the classroom.